clerk will read out the names. Hello and welcome to Parliament and Governance on Independent Television. I am Uyi Agumofwegbe in Benin City, Nigeria. The ANSAS protest that sought to end police brutality in the country seems to have become, for want of better words, a Pandora's box in a sense, at least in part. Uh, those demonstrations have now unearthed a number of issues, including the discussion on whether or not to regulate the social media. As a matter of fact, there is the belief that the protest, generally speaking, gained momentum in the first place and traction ultimately on account of the adoption and deployment of social media. It has been exactly a year now since two bills were introduced at the National Assembly. One is aimed at stemming the tide of hate speech and the other is proposed to well regulate the social media. While there has been some back and forth as to the possibility or otherwise of regulating the social media in Nigeria, let's quickly establish some perspectives regarding the social media bill in particular. This bill has since been before the Senate since November of 2019 and has scaled first and second readings, even though critics have largely believed that the haste is not unconnected with the desire by some in power to serve their selfish interest. The government on this part says the bill is to help curtail extreme content on the social media as well as guard against threats to national security, but Amnesty International calls it harsh. Without denying the political, legal, and socioeconomic elements in the conversation about regulating the social media anywhere in the world, we must recognize that Nigeria has recorded an incredible internet penetration rate while the country's social media acceptance continues to grow astronomically. Corporations like Facebook, which doubles as the parent company of Instagram and WhatsApp, and Twitter have established themselves as global influences across all endeavors. Felix Imafidon is Chief Executive Officer at Requid Technologies, a financial services company based in Lagos, Nigeria. We all acknowledge the fact that there are a lot of benefits with uh, the advent of social media. Uh, we cannot also discount or run away from you know, some of the, the ill things that come with the use of social media as well from uh, security concerns um, you know of course disinformation out there what many of us know as fake news uh, people using the platform to defame others uh, people using the platform to you know incite uh, violence here and there so you could sit in the comfort of your home maybe hiding behind a keyboard and then you say something that just incites people to go do stuff or whatever it is you know from time to time yeah so these things are there and in the light of that, the government, you know, has been most governments, not just in the U.S., you know, uh, there, there have been a number of situations outside of the U.S. Uh, and here even in Nigeria, the government has, to some extent, attributed the violence in places like Lagos, where, you know, we saw a lot of looting, uh, destruction of public property. Uh, these things have been attributed to some extent to the fact that uh, some people used their influence on social media to incite others to carry out some of these things, right? Why, while we don't know, why we can't say for sure that that's the case, we all do acknowledge, though, that, uh, you know, the fact that social media gives people some sort of voice, right? And then for a lot of people or some people as well, uh, some sort of influencer status, uh, a lot of people, you know, because it, it's not a place where there's, you know, a lot of control and regulation. Some people are beginning to abuse that, uh, as it were, that, uh, you know, access that they have, right? And uh, a lot of governments are beginning to, you know, uh, draft bills, uh, create laws that regulate or censor, to some extent, what people can then do on social media. As regards how this impacts uh, social media at large, uh, the point is... 
when 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 social media came one of the good things that happened was people realized that they now had a voice right i could you know if i needed to speak up about something in the past i would have to maybe uh try to get some contact with a radio station a tv station or you know some of these things were cumbersome in those times right uh but now you know just create a facebook account create a twitter account and then I say something, if I'm lucky enough, some celebrity retweets it or reposts it, and voila, I have 2 million views. 2 million people have seen what I have said. Some may agree with what I have said. Some may take action based on what I have said. It doesn't really matter. But the point is that the fact that people now do have a voice because of their access to social media, which is a good thing in itself, right, also creates some sort of uh, opportunity for abuse, right, where people could use the platform to defame others, spread misinformation, incite people to do the wrong thing. So what we might see in the coming months or maybe the coming years will be governments doing a lot more in uh, figuring out how best to censor, control, regulate activities on social media. Of course, your argument could be, would this not in some way, you know, uh, infringe the rights of people to maybe free speech and all of that? But the line between that, that's not, uh, I'm not, I'm not an expert in all of that. Uh, but my personal views are that at some point, as we already seen in a lot of countries, Nigeria might also get to that point where uh, they figure out a way of uh, censoring. But of course, we're hoping that uh, that control, that regulation around that space doesn't, you know, uh, infringe on the rights of uh, people one way or the other. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, believes Nigeria is risking too much by not regulating the social media. We launched a campaign to regulate the social media, which was bitterly contested by the stakeholders. But we didn't stop. And we kept saying that if we do not regulate the social media, it will destroy us. Sir. Social media and fake did not start destroying Nigeria. Social media has come to stay. We are not complaining about social media. We are complaining about the unbridled, unregulated social media. We are looking at the negative aspect of social media. And it is not just communist countries that are very wary of social media, even the US. By the way, the minister made that statement while defending the 2021 budget of his ministry. But there are also legal issues associated with the regulation of social media. Martin Obono is a human rights lawyer and shares his thoughts on this matter from a constitutional perspective. The constitution under section 4 guarantees you freedoms. So there are fundamental freedoms within which the constitution guarantees everybody in Nigeria. So you have freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, um, freedom of association, and the rest. And now these are all these freedoms, all these freedoms that actually make up what is called civic space. Now, if anything affects these freedoms, it automatically means that you're limiting it. Here's a quick check, though. At the turn of the millennium, two questions have often been asked. First, who owns the internet? And second is, can the social media ever be regulated? Perhaps the third question will be, can Nigeria in particular regulate the social media? More than ever before, the ANSAS protests accentuated the place of social media in critical communication. It therefore did not come as a surprise when the government revisited the conversation around the proposed bill designed to regulate the social media, however, with perhaps more vehemence this time. Across the world, examples abound of countries that have made a move towards regulating or banning access to social media. The NSAS protest, uh, many of us would agree, started with the events that happened in Delta State, right? And then the guy who post, uh, took that video posted it on social media, you know, and conversations began to happen. Why would we have this happening? Uh, can't we do something about this? Blah, blah, blah. And then people began to share. Of course, we've always had, uh, you know, situations like where people share stories of how uh, they've had some, you know, not very great experience with um, our security forces who are supposed to protect us and all of that. And then, you know, conversations started, conversations on top of that. And then before we knew it, the whole protest began on social media as well, where people began to say, we won't take this anymore. 
uh, something has to be done. The government's attention needs to be brought to, you know, police brutality, as it were, and all of that. And then beyond that, some people have decided, why not take this protest that we're having right now online on social media to the streets, right? And before you knew it, there was one protest here, there were two protests, and it became a decentralized protest where you had myriads of protests happening um, almost at the same time in different parts of the country and all of that. So, of course, so it was clear. Social media, the conversation started on social media, went from there to, uh, to the streets as well. So, yeah, social media was a huge contribu uh, contributive factor, or a tool, rather, um, that people used to, you know, uh, get the NSAS protest both online and then onto the street as well. In 2013, for instance, India took down 4,765 posts from Facebook under the government's claim of unlawful blasphemy of the state. Israel is not an exception. In September of 2016, the cabinet of Israel was said to have agreed with Facebook to remove content that is deemed inciting. In December 2018, the Sudanese government blocked Facebook along with other social media sites which were being used by anti-government protesters to organize protests against former President Omar al-Bashir. The restrictions were lifted 68 days later following the introduction of the emergency measures outlining public demonstrations. Beyond the bill currently before the National Assembly, what are the odds that the federal government can effectively entrench regulatory measures towards putting tabs on social media? The, the government is trying to do something, you know, uh, to control or regulate, censor, whatever that is, in practical terms, uh, activities of people on social media. Now, maybe the question is, is this a possibility? So when you ask the question of, is this a possibility, uh, there are a number of legs to this. So there's the legal side of things. Uh, people are already asking questions. Does this not infringe of, you know, human rights of free speech uh, and all of that, right? I'm not a legal expert, so maybe I can't speak technically to uh, whether or not that's a possibility. But I might just assume or guess that, of course, uh, maybe it's possible because... You know, if you look at what other countries are doing around that, democratic so it's, um, government, I, I'm not speaking of uh, uh, maybe countries like China who run a different kind of government and they've been able to do a lot more in censorship, right? Uh, a lot of democracies have figured out a way of, you know, doing this while not trampling on the rights of people. So from a legal standpoint, I guess depending on what the letters of that bill would be, it might be possible to implement, right? But the next question is, maybe that's what I can speak of, is from a technical standpoint, right? Uh, from a technology standpoint, is this something that is possible? Absolutely, yes, right? Um, there are a lot of ways, you know, uh, people do this. Uh, what will usually happen, what China did, for example, is this, you would have heard of the Great China Wall, or what they call the Great, more correctly, the Great China Firewall, where all internet communication within the country, you know, uh, whether you're trying to access something from outside, you live in China, you're trying to access Facebook, uh, a Microsoft platform, whatever it is, right? All of that communication will still have to pass through some sort of proxy, right? Some sort of firewall, like a gateway, you know, in English now. Uh, and then, based on what you are trying to access from within the country, right? They will then decide that no, we don't want you to access this. These are the kind of websites, social media platforms that you should access. Uh, I, I'd say for China, it was a mix of both, you know, wanting to censor what we were doing, plus for them also some sort of economic um, um, impact. So what China did very brilliantly was, you know, aside just saying we want to regulate, you know, activity on social media, they also wanted to say. Instead of driving all our traffic, our internet traffic to third-party platform, platforms provided by uh, all that, you know, companies outside of China, why don't we have the equivalent of these things like WhatsApp, for example, where it was replaced by WeChat in China, which was smart, right? Uh, but now, coming back to whether we can implement it, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, just the government telling all the ISPs, our internet service providers, and saying... Uh, from now on, all your traffic can pass through our 
proxy or our own firewall where we now determine what kind of uh, requests to the internet or connections to the internet or any social media platforms would be allowed you know to pass through so uh, from a technology standpoint it's really not something that would be difficult for the government to do but the question would now be in terms of the letter of the bill of the law or whatever that they come up with uh, what exactly will they be saying you know what would they be preventing people from being able to do what would they be censoring in essence what kind of regulation would they be coming up with and all of that that's i don't have any uh information about right now but then it's it's actually very possible there is no gain saying the fact that in certain parts of the world the need to check excesses on social media may arise however what exactly have other countries done in this regard and what lessons can nigeria as a country learn from them the issues associated with regulating the social media are quite numerous, so the task is more complex than we readily realize. Lawyers and various rights activists have continually spoken up against this bill, which proposes a range of penalties for offenders, including jail terms. The companies behind these platforms have become more powerful on account of their crowd and the wealth they have amassed on the backs of humongous advertising revenue. In 2014, Facebook bought WhatsApp for an upwards of $19 billion. Even though the company is still grappling with the challenge of monetizing the app six years and counting, the platform has gained global popularity. With nothing less than 111 languages, Facebook is today valued at $528 billion. Well, that is way more than Nigeria's GDP as of 2019. At the end of third quarter of this year, Facebook boasts active monthly user base of 2.7 billion. Twitter, on the other hand, has also ensured it continues to shape conversations across the world, no matter what the subject of interest may be. Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey, founders and CEOs of Facebook and Twitter, respectively, have had their own fair share of grilling by the United States Congress over their roles in not just the U.S. elections, but their influence on a global scale, which now essentially places them in the ranks of non-state actors. This, amongst other things, speaks to the spirit of engagement between politicians at the Capitol and tech executives in Silicon Valley. People need to be a lot more responsible, you know, for information that they spread, right? Uh, so in China, for example, contravening some of their, you know, control laws. So control here now is laws that control your usage of social media, uh, distribution of content, uh, bypassing some of, uh, trying to bypass their firewalls and all of that. You could get, you actually get a life sentence, you know, for breaching some of these their laws as it were so maybe one of the lessons that we should learn here in nigeria is uh, a lot of nigerians are not very responsible when it comes to distributing content you receive something on whatsapp some broadcast somebody tells you oh this is what's going on here this is what somebody did blah 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 and then you don't you know take the extra step you don't feel that it's a responsibility to verify that that piece of information is correct irrespective of who you're receiving it from right you take it and then you spread it to 100 other people and then it just goes from there. If you remember, there was a story at some point where people, some lady said, oh, taking salt, you know, could prevent you from, was it Ebola then at the time? You know, prevent you from getting Ebola. I can't remember, I think it was Ebola then. And then, that was it. It was for her, it was just a prank. She sent information to some people and as, as you know it, most Nigerians just get it and, you know, they start spreading without verifying whether it's an authentic piece of information or whether it's something that you know other people should rely on you know and then before you knew it a lot of people started drinking a lot of salt and people lost their lives people we were a lot of uh, people were rushed to the hospital because of that misinformation so maybe one of, that's one of the lessons that we should learn from this another would be the fact that you know uh, if the government says they're going to regulate it they can regulate it because a lot of countries already have uh, some sort of law that governs uh, distribution of content, uh, defamation of people online, uh, bullying online, cyberbullying, access to pornographic content. In some countries, yes, uh, you could get a jail time for accessing pornographic content. I think China does that already. Yeah, so point is, if the government says they want to, then they can. But then, of course, uh, you want to make your argument and say, is this the right thing? Are we okay with it? But that's, 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 that's a different conversation altogether. 
However, not much is heard or seen on the part of Nigerian government in terms of engaging these stakeholders, particularly tech executives who own these platforms, policy analysts and subject matter experts. The United States and even countries in Europe have set examples for us and indeed any other country that intends to regulate how its citizens deploy the social media. Why Nigerians await public hearing proposed by federal legislators, meaningful and sincere dialogue must be seen to be going on. Until that is done, neither the proponents of the social media bill nor its critics can categorically say they have reached the victory lap. And that is Parliament and Governors for this week. Thanks for your time. I am Uyia Mufwegwe. Have a pleasant evening ahead of you.